Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camels, the cigarette that's first in the service. Camels stay fresh because they're packed to go around the world. Listen to the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes, Billy Gray as Little Matilda, Cliff Nazaro, tonight's guest, the lovely Paramount star, Miss Veronica Lake, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. There you are, Costello. Late again. You know we have to go to Palm Springs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you borrow Mrs. Niles' car? Yeah, but I had a terrible accident, Abbott. I upset it. I gotta turn it over right away or Mrs. Niles won't like it. Well, we can do that when we come back from Palm Springs. No, I gotta turn the car over now. Mrs. Niles is gonna be mad. I'll explain it to Mrs. Niles. Where is she? She's under the car. Uh, what? <laughs> She's under the car. Yeah. Is she in a coma? No, she's in an evening gown. No, no. Well, then, let's get Ken Niles to help lift the car. Come oh, on. Ken is in a good spot to help us. Well, fine. Where is he? He's under the car, too. Oh, my goodness. For goodness sakes, how did this accident happen? I bumped into another car, Rabbit. And boy, was that driver mad at me. He said, for two cents, I'll put you right in the nose. And what happened? He ran up a bill of $8. <laughs> you, were very, you were very silly to argue with a driver. Why didn't you call a police? I didn't have to. I hit one. Uh, you what? I hit a policeman. You hit a policeman? Hmm. In uniform? No. I hit him right in the nose. Oh, oh this, is, this is liable to spoil our whole trip to Palm Springs. Uh, did the cop recognize you? Yeah. Hey, could he swear to you? Could he swear to me? Yeah. Yeah, and I sweared right back at him. That's what I thought. I said, you David Copperfield, you tail of two cities, you Oliver Twist. Wait a minute. What did you say that for? I was giving him the dickens. I, oh. <laughs> This is a fine thing. Now I have to straighten him out with a policeman. Where is he? He's under the car, too. Oh, my goodness. What are they all doing under the car? Have you looked for an apartment lately? I love it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Here comes Mr. and Mrs. Niles. Better beat it, Costello. Oh, no, you don't. You fat-headed, flabby, car-flipping fool. Oh, do you realize you left me out there under the car holding up the rumble seat? What a lion, holding up the rumble sheet. I could spoil the whole network right here, but I won't. <laughs> Don't stand there like an idiot. What have you got to say? Good morning, Mrs. Niles. Don't good morning me. Good night, Mrs. Niles. That day went fast, didn't it? <laughs> Costello, why did you leave Mrs. Niles under the back seat of that car? Isn't that where they always keep the crank? No. <laughs> Just a minute, you worm. Don't try to wiggle out of this. What about me? Look at my suit. I'm a mess. Without looking at your suit, you're a mess. <laughs> but look at the spots all over my suit. All right. Throw the suit away and wear the spots. Costello, I've had enough. We're going out to get the policeman and sue you for damages. Damages? damages? Put Mrs. No, that's mine. Thank you. Damn, damn. <laughs> Damages, but Mrs. Niles, uh, did you get hurt? Did I get hurt? Yeah. I have a big scratch on my crazy bone. Put your hat on and nobody will notice it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come, Kenneth. Come on, Abbott. Think fast. Think very fast. i got to get out of here before they come back with a cop. Oh, you can cause more trouble. Now, uh, we're going down to Palm Springs to ask Veronica Lake to appear on our next picture. Gee, I hope she will. She will. Now, um, uh, you wreck the car. We've got to, uh, we're going to use. What are we going to do? I have it. Well, now we'll have to rent a car. You mean because I wrecked the car, we've got to rent another car? Yes, we'll have to rent it. Okay. Where can we get one? Uh, you drive. I beg your pardon? You drive. <laughs> Me drive? No, you drive. <laughs> I said I drive. No. You don't drive it. I drive it. Drive what? Hey, you drive. Why should I drive when you want to drive? <laughs> now, I am going to drive. Look, Costello, I'm renting a you drive, and I drive it. Then we both drive it. No. We do nothing of the kind. I drive it. When I say you drive, I don't mean you drive. I mean that I drive, although it's a you drive. Uh, when you say you drive, you don't mean me drive. You mean you drive because me don't drive. Now you've got it. Now I've got now it. Now you've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Look. Hey, Abbott, take right. it easy. Don't try to get me mixed oh, up. go ahead. Now, look, you go to a place and you rent a car. Yes. You, not me, you are driving the car. Yes. 
Where am I sitting? You are sitting right next to me. Is there a steering wheel in front of me? No. And you're positive that I am not driving? I'm positive. And you are driving the car? Yes. All right. What kind of a car are you driving? You drive. <laughs> All I can say is somebody better be driving, brother. No, 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 no. Look, Costello, I'm trying to explain this. We go and rent a car. Right. Now, where are we going to get it? You drive company. Now I drive company. I thought we were going to Park Springs alone. You don't understand. It hurts you drive. Well, if it hurts you drive. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's this r- thing is getting worse. No, no, don't you see? The head of the company's hurts. That's too bad. What hurts him? Nothing. Nothing hurts him. Look, every company has to have a head. Naturally. This company's head's hurts. Then let him take a nap. <laughs> listen, Costello, please listen to me. It hurts you drive all over the country. If it hurts to drive all over the country, why should I drive to Palm Spring and get hurt? You don't get hurt. It hurts company. Hurts company. I don't want to hurt nobody. Look, will you listen to me? The man's name is Hertz. He rents cars. You drive. It's you drive all over the country. Not with that OPA, brother. <laughs> now, what are you talking about? What do you mean? What am I talking about? I mean, after all, that's why I can't go. OPA. What do you mean, OPA? Well, I only got a puny A card. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> A German torpedo boat streaks toward an Allied convoy in the Mediterranean. Suddenly, from an American freighter, bursts a chatter of rapid-fire cannon. The E-boat quivers, bursts into flame. And a Navy gun crew has saved another shipload of supplies. They've got what it takes, these Navy gunners. And so has their cigarette, camels, first with men in all the services according to actual sales records. Wherever they are, from Iceland to the Gilbert Islands, their camel cigarettes will be fresh when they reach them cool smoking and slow burning because camels are packed to go around the world. More camel cigarettes overseas may mean less in your store, so be patient. If you can't buy camels today, try tomorrow. Remember, when you get camels, you always get more flavor, the result of expert blending of costlier tobaccos. Because camel's tobacco standard is the same for soldier, for civilian, anywhere in the world. C-A-M-E-L Yes, camel cigarettes. They stay fresh because they're packed to go around the world. Freddie Rich plays the ever popular Dancing in the Dark. Costello, here we are at the Swanky Lone Palm Hotel, right out here in the middle of the desert. Oh, I don't like the desert. 
It's full of insects. Oh, not at this time of the year. Yeah, but where do all the little bugs go in the wintertime? Search me. No, thanks. I just wanted to find out. Oh, now listen, please. Stop that. <laughs> Come on, let's get a rope. Okay. Oh, clerk, clerk. Oh, jerk, jerk. I... Just a moment, please. This is a very high-class hotel. I'll have you understand, I'm not a jerk. You're not even a vibration. <laughs> Costello, will you please act like a gentleman? Okay, kid. Uh, clerk, uh, we'd like a room. Very well. Do you want a room with a bath? What do you think I want to do, follow the arrow? Uh... <laughs> Listen, clerk, we're going to make a not very a important play. picture. Please. <laughs> Costello, will you listen to me? Uh, Mr. Clark, we're going to make a very important picture, and we came down here to see Veronica Lake about being our leading lady. Oh, yes, she's stopping here. Every time I see Veronica Lake, I want to kiss her. My mind says no, and my heart says yes. Well, what do you hear from your liver? <laughs> well, Mr. Costello, if you'll just sign the register, I'll have the boy show you to your sweet. My what? Your sweet, your sweet. You're cute, too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on, clerk. Now, what about the room? All right, Mr. Costello. I have a lovely room for you on the 10th floor. Here's the key, 1006. Now, get going. Okay. Hey, clerk, I'd like to leave a call for 12 o'clock. Sorry, we're all out of 12 o'clock calls. Then call me twice at 6. <laughs> now, listen, Costello, please. Will you take that key and get up to the 10th floor and into your room? Okay. See you later, Abbott. All right. Hello? Okay. Now, listen, clerk. I want to meet Veronica Lake right away because, you see, every... 10th floor? 10th floor? Wait a minute. There's only one floor in this hotel. You haven't got ten floor. Oh, good heavens, man. You're right. This is serious. Oh, Mr. Costello, there's no tenth floor. Come right down. <laughs> oh. Oh. Costello. Costello. Speak to me, Costello. Are you all right? What can I do for you? Send the boy up for my bags, will you? <laughs> Hey, come on now, Abbott. Now, let's get out of this place now. Now, I've never been so humidity in all my life. Humidity? Yes, he humidityed me. Humidity? Humidity means damn. Then let's get out of this damp hotel. Damn. You can't check out. You just checked in. Oh, it's a gypsy in me. No, never mind. Shut up. You can't leave here. Now, we've got to see Veronica Lake. Okay, but if I stay, I want a room right close to hers. Well, that's easily arranged. Miss Lake is in 104, and I'll put you in 105. Ain't you got nothing closer? No, no, look, look. Never mind, please. Grab the bags and let's get to our room. It's right over there. Now, here's the key. Open the door. Hey, Abbott, look who's in our room. And I'm only three and a half years old. <laughs> Matilda, how did you get to Palm Springs? Did you come down here on the Greyhound? No, the Greyhound was full. I came down on a Pekingese. <laughs> Uncle Louie, I got a job here in Mr. King Chiney's Lone Palm Hotel. Well, what's the job, Matilda? I'm chambermaid. I put lace curtains around all the mouse holes in the wall. Lace curtains around all the mice holes? Why do you do that? That attracts a higher class mice. <laughs> oh, come on, now get out of here. Now listen, Costello, I... Hey, Abbott, what? that's Matilda knocking on the door again, just to bother me. I'm going to put her over my knee and paddle her. All right, you ask for it. Ow! Ow! Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought you was only three and a half years old. <laughs> Costello, it's Veronica Lake. See here, Costello. I came here because the room clerk said you wanted to see me, and this happens... I've never been so humiliated in all my life. You see, Abbott, she said the same word. That humili... humili... Bl 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 she thinks it's a damp hotel, too. <laughs> Dampness has nothing to do with it. I said humiliate, conjugated from the Latin humilius, humilia, humilium. I humiliate, she humiliates, they humiliate. Now, do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Everybody in the joint is damp. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop that and pay attention to Miss Lake? <laughs> yes, Costello. I'll have you know that I studied Latin at my mater's knee. Your whose knee? <laughs> mater. Mater means mother and pater means father. Where are your mater and pater? They went to the theater with my brader and Seder. <laughs> I mean, after all, I mean... <laughs> Look, Veronica, never mind, See, Costello. I make up all my own jokes. Will you keep quiet, Lou? 
please, pay no attention I'm to sorry, him, Veronica. But the fact look. is, we came down here to see you about uh, being the leading lady in our next picture. Well, I think that's impossible because I'm down that's here. Slake's make... line, please. Oh, oh that's thank right. you, Bart. <laughs> I'm down here making a picture of my own. My director's waiting for me now out on the desert. I'd like to go with you. How do you get out there? On a jackass. Did you ever ride a jackass? No. Then you'd better get on to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of a very, very snappy remark, ain't it? That's a funny joke. I think I'll try it on Abbott. Hey, Abbott! Now what do you want? Did you ever ride a jackass? No. Then hop on my back. Huh? Get up! Get up! Connie Haynes sings the lovely new ballad, My Heart Tells Me. My heart tells me this is just a fling Yet you say I love means everything Do you mean what you are saying? Or is this a little game? Playing. My heart tells me I will cry again. Lips that kiss like yours would lie again. If I'm fool enough to see this through, will I be Sorry if I do Should I believe my heart or you My heart tells me I will cry again Lips that kiss like yours could lie again one of the many people who've tried a camel cigarette or two, liked them, but just never got around to smoking them steadily. If you are, let me tell you the difference between smoking just one camel cigarette and smoking a pack or two. You see, camels do have more flavor, the result of our expert blending of costlier tobaccos. More flavor is what helps camels to hold up, keep from going flat no matter how many you smoke. When you're on your second pack of camel cigarettes, make a careful checkup in your T-zone. T for taste and throat, and be your own judge of Camel Cigarettes' rich extra flavor and smooth extra mildness. And remember, your Camel Cigarettes will stay fresh, cool smoking, and slow burning anywhere because they're packed to go around the world. C A M E L S. Camel Cigarettes, they're first in the service. They've got what it takes. Costello. All right, come on now. You had enough. Get off my back. Oh, oh pa pardon me. You know, Costello, you really did give me a good ride. That's right, pal. I did, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Come on, what are you trying to tie me up to the hitching post for? Hey, quiet, you guys. We're shooting a picture. Get that camera over here. All right, you extras. Line up on the right. Hey, Joe, bring that dummy over here. Okay. Put me down. Put me down. <laughs> hey, Costello, look at those beautiful extra girls over there. Now, as long as we're here, what do you say we date up a couple for tonight? Oh, no. Not after last night, my friend. What do you mean? We had a couple of girls last night, well, remember? Well, so, all right. You had the best look of them. So what? Yours had teeth. Now, wait a minute, please. <laughs> Never mind that. Yours had teeth, too. I'll say she did. Yeah. Mine had so much bridge work, every time I kissed her, I had to pay toll. Nah, never mind that. <laughs> I mean, after all, there's a... Come on, and another thing, Abbott. What? We're down here for business. I know Forget that. girls. 
We've got to get Veronica Lake in our picture. All right, there's her dressing room over there. I'll knock on the door. Oh, it's you boys again. I told you at the hotel that I wouldn't appear in your picture. But, Veronica, you're making a great mistake. We've had a lot of experience in the theater. I was in Tobacco Road. What did you do, empty the ashtrays? <laughs> Boy, she sure told you, Abbott. Just a minute, Costello. Where did you ever act? Where did I ever act? I played in the way of all flesh. What part did you play? I was one of the meatballs. <laughs> I didn't recognize you in that. You didn't recognize me, eh? Huh? Well, I was wearing a spaghetti toupee. <laughs> well, that's the first time you ever used your need- noodle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's no use, Costello. Hey, Veronica will only make a picture with glamour boys. I'm a glamour boy. Just the other night, Hetty Lamar told me I was her idea of a lover. Then her husband walked in. Then what happened? Her idea was carried out. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do, fellows. We're just about to shoot a scene for my picture. That scene is shot. Now what about the next one? <laughs> Veronica, we're already on the set. Oh, here comes my director. Oh, Cliff, I want you to meet Mr. Costello. Mr. Nazaro, Mr. Costello. Mr. Abbott, Mr. Nazaro. Mr. Costello, Mr. Abbott, Mr. Abbott. Get behind a crowd. Let's get some more chairs. <laughs> will you? He's it. Uh, quiet. Cliff. Can you use these two boys in our picture? Yes, I think so. I, uh, I need a lover and a stunt man. I'm a lover. I'm stunted. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Abbott. You're no lover. Now, what do you mean? When I come on the screen, women sit up and notice me. Oh, yeah? The women who notice you are too old to sit up. <laughs> Cliff, we're wasting time. Why don't you explain the scene to the boys? All right. Now, boys, this is a very simple scene. The camera catches Veronica and Abbott in an embrace. Costello, you come into the room, and I want you to walk over to Racery, lift up the caster, and pull in your sailor breeze, and pour the right to Cadbury to suffer memory. How can Abbott do that to me? <laughs> you don't stand for it. You grab Veronica in your arms, and you say, Veronica, I'm a long since available, by the way. And every time that I pull you, see a little credit breeze. <laughs> I want you to kill the freezer, not the polar vice, for the times that I sang with Hilton Penny Porter's celebrated by Piper Taylor. Did you get it? Yeah, I mean, you, you... You didn't say it! Why don't you pay attention? He's directing you, Lou. Costello, I want you to know that you can't insult my director. Absolutely not. After all, I just told you I want you to go over to Veronica, pick up the Santa Breeze, not the little cast in the hope of Mr. balls. <laughs> I want you to walk towards her. Put your arms, put that little Santa face, pull the shoulder face, and treat this sort of face. And I know what I'm saying. You and nobody else. There you go again, insulting him. I can't understand you. You can't understand me. Listen to him. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Costello? Can't you take direction? Mr. Nazaro is a famous director. Yes. You mean, you mean to tell me you never saw Gorm with the Samadrons? <laughs> or for whom the bells told the Samadrons to pay the I never saw them, but I saw Guadalcanal to dip. <laughs> you mean Guadalcanal dip? Did it? I saw it twice. <laughs> Will you stop that, please? Let's get back to the scene, Cliff. Mr. Costello was just about to make love to me. All right, Veronica. Now, Costello, listen once more. You fall in love with Veronica and propose to her. I want you to give me that depth of assorted grace when they pace <laughs> And I want you to go over to her and bring out the cast and bring out the sound of force of the times when you love not Carrie Grant and those other actors in race. I want you to send her father and stand race. Don't you agree with me? Yeah, but what about the children? Ah, let's... <laughs> he didn't mention any children. But he could have! <laughs> Now, listen, Veronica, I've got a reputation, and I don't have to stand for this, because if I have to stand, listen, these fellas come and tell me that I've directed farmers, I've made cantrons, faltrons, English salad trees, crop pots, and I've made the parts of the picture, and I'm ordering to sell it, and I'll do it, too. And he means every word of it. Uh, look, folks, I, I realize I lost my head, and there's just thing I'd like, to, just one more thing I'd like to say before I go. Scan a flannel center for this summer ten minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad he said that because he's a nice fellow. <laughs> yes, he certainly is, Costello. Just think, after the way you treated him, 
He was big enough to walk back and say, Scatterflannis and Alistairson. And that means a lot, too. Yes, Lou. What have you got to say? I mean, after all, what can I say? After the fellow was big enough to come back and say, Scatterflannis and Alistairson. Scatterflannis. Lou, if you hadn't been so frantic when he came into Thrallin and Clivisade, he wouldn't have been so Palustide. Palustide? That's the one thing I didn't do to him, Palustide. I mean, what does he want from me? What does he want from you? Why, at this very moment, he might be outside gilfending. No, not gilfending. Who, oh, Abbott? Abbott, come on. We haven't got a minute to lose. Where are we going? We're going outside and kill Fend with him. Get out of here. Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight we salute Cavalry Lieutenant David C. Weibull of Piedmont, California who has been awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for extraordinary heroism in Sicily. Trapped with a small patrol between a blown-out bridge and four enemy tanks, he ordered his men, armed only with machine guns, to fire. When their ammunition was exhausted, he told his men to seek cover and jump directly in the path of the tanks, firing a Tommy gun at point-blank range, killing the entire crew of the leading tank and enabling his men to hold out until reinforcements came. In your honor, Lieutenant David Weber... The makers of camels are sending to our soldiers overseas 300,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the four camel shows honors a Yank of the Week, sends 300,000 camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the traveling camel caravans have thanked nearly three and a half million Yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States four times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen Friday night to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore. Saturday night to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. Monday night to Blondie. And, of course, Thursday night, it's Abbott and Costello with their guest, Arthur Treacher. And now here's Abbott and Costello with a final word. Thanks, Ken. Well, Costello, I'm certainly glad to be away from the Lone Palms Hotel in Palm Springs and all that trouble. That's right, Abbott. And I... Come in. Costello, I'm Officer O'Houlihan. You're under arrest for causing personal damage to Mrs. Niles and to her car. I'm taking you to the station house. Oh, yeah? Where's your patrol wagon? The patrol wagon broke down. Then how are we going? You drive. You drive! <laughs> Not me, brother! Oh, Risa, speak an officer, eh? Take that! Ooh-hoo. Now, what have you got to say? It hurts! That's what I've been trying to tell you all day. Tell me what? Hurts you drive. All right, I'll drive! The... Tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show with our guest, Arthur Treacher. And remember, camel cigarettes are first in the service. They've got what it takes. Camels stay fresh because they're packed to go around the world. Veronica Lake will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, Hour Before the Dawn. This is Ken Niles wishing you all a very pleasant good night from Hollywood. More pipes smoke Prince Albert. Find out for yourself why PA's got so much pipe appeal. Why more pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco in the whole world. Just open up a big red two-ounce package of Prince Albert and light up a pipe full. See how fragrant, how mild and sweet smoking it is. Notice how easy and comfortable Prince Albert is on your tongue, because it's no bite treated. See how well Prince Albert packs and burns and draws because it's crimp cut. Yes, sir, get a package and you'll find out why more pipes smoke Prince Albert. It's the national joy 